G'day fellas. Uh, I realize my intro isn't really inclusive to all genders. Uh, g'day fellas and fellettes. G'day fellas and G'day everyone! In this video, I'll be showing you guys some of the best farms to build in your survival Minecraft world. Each of the builds I'll be showing have a corresponding tutorial video that I've made. So if you like the look of a farm, just click in the top right corner at any time to find the video for it. You can also check the description for a link to each farm as well. Now, before I get started showing you each farm, I just wanna let you know that each farm has been created to be aesthetically pleasing and is not necessarily the most efficient design out there. This is a building channel after all, and aesthetics come first. However, given that, I'm pretty sure all of the designs are the most efficient ones out there, but correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. So now let's get started and take a look at each of the farm designs. Now we may as well start off with the farm that was behind me for the intro, and this one is an XP farm. Now this farm is interchangeable with skeletons or zombies, either or will work for this farm. And basically this is set up so that there is a spawner in here, we also have a switch here that toggles it on and off in case if there's something gone wrong in the uh, mechanism or anything like that. So you can turn it on or off like that. And so we pretty much have a spawner here. Anything that spawns will drop down into the water and they'll get sent down the water and up this tube here, which sends them all the way up. We'll see it in just a second here. And there we go. They all start going up and pretty much they go all the way up there. I think it's about 23 blocks or something like that. And then they go across and then they drop down here. And this is so it takes just one swing of a sword to kill a zombie. You don't even need an enchanted sword. You can just get any regular sword and just swing. And you'll pretty much start killing them. You may want sweeping edge if you want to kill all of them in one strike. But with one strike, you will do damage to a bunch around them and you will kill one. So there we go. Now we're starting to kill a bunch of them as well. So this is mainly set up to be an XP farm, but we also have a bunch of hoppers under here and these get sent down into our storage area down here. And this is also expandable downwards. We've already expanded this one by four chests in total. So we have a system here set up so that the hoppers go into this chest and then this hopper collects the items from the above chest and then just pretty much repeats that all the way down to here. So once this chest fills up, it'll start filling up the next one and so on and so forth until we are out of storage. So coming back up the ladder, I'll just showcase a few more interesting features that this XP farm has. One of the noticeable things is that it also looks really nice. It's it's set up to be aesthetically pleasing rather than just an efficient design. So you could show this off to one of your friends or anything in your world and they'll be pretty pleased with how this looks. So the main feature I talked about before is that this is toggleable. So we have this lever here that turns on all of these redstone lamps and it stops the zombies from spawning completely. As you can see, we have no zombies spawning. And then once I turn this lever back off, you can see that some zombies spawn straight away. And all this is, is just a simple redstone system. We just have this lever hooked up to a bunch of redstone, which just pretty much goes to all of these lanterns. You don't need to add this in. It's more so if you just want to add this in. So if you go and look at this tutorial, feel free to just leave out the redstone if you want to. The other feature is of course that the zombies go up along here. They get sent up this bubble column all the way up to the top. And then they just go across here down the water and then they get dropped down. As you can see, there is a little problem where some zombies get stuck, but once another zombie comes up, it'll push them down. And sometimes they even do fall down themselves, just like that one did there. And then they get sent down here with really low health, and then you can obviously just hit them and kill them. Now, the last feature over here is pretty much just like a maintenance tunnel. It's just a way to access into where the actual spawner is so that you can clear up any clogs or anything. Even though this design pretty much never clogs up, it's just in case if some other mob somehow spawns in here and, and clogs up the mechanism, so you have some easy access to get in here. So that is the XP farm. If you like this design and want to build it for yourself, feel free to click in the top right corner right now, and that'll take you to the tutorial for this build. Build. Next up, we're moving on to the melon or pumpkin farm. So this is another simple farm design that's been made to be aesthetically pleasing. You can see we've got it in this contained little house looking kind of build here. We've got a nice roof, some nice wall designs and stuff like that. Now this design actually has two different ways that you can make it. Right now I have it in the more aesthetically pleasing design which has these fences across here. But it also means that sometimes when a crop gets harvested, it can get stuck on the side here and not be picked up. You can just replace all of these with glass blocks if you don't want that to happen. And it still looks good as well. So with this design, we have a bunch of observers and pistons. And all the observers are doing are watching this stem here. And once the stem grows a pumpkin or a melon, it actually updates the stem block itself, which triggers the observer. And then that triggers the piston to push down and it breaks the block. And then to pick up all of the blocks that have been harvested, we head down here. 
You can see we have this minecart with a hopper that just goes back and forth repeatedly and collects everything above it. And as it goes over this hopper, it'll deposit a couple of items, which is all it really needs. And then it heads down, like the XP farm, we have an expandable storage system here. And then you can see at the bottom, we have all of our items and this will fill up from the bottom up to the top. So this design is really easy to make. The only annoying thing is that it's just got a bunch of pistons and observers, which aren't too hard to make on their own. But once you set this up, you just kind of forget about it for a while. And then over time, it'll harvest a bunch of melons and pumpkins, which are useful for trading with villagers and for food if you want as well. And it's also pretty much an essential farm for every survival world. And so if you like the look of this build and you want to build it for yourself feel free to click in the top right right now to head over to my tutorial for this build so on to the next one we have the automatic sugarcane farm now this design is quite a bit bigger than the previous melon and pumpkin farm design but it also achieves a similar thing where it's a fully automatic farm you kind of just build it and forget about it and it looks good in your world as well due to it being created inside of this nice build although it is a little bit over detailed in my opinion i probably could have left out a lot of detail so feel free to remove probably some of these signs i would remove and that already looks a lot better than it did just before. So once again, this design has a hopper that just repeatedly goes back and forth between these areas here. To turn it on and off, we have this lever here that you can turn off. And once the minecart with a hopper arrives here, it'll stop and then you can just turn it back on and it'll start back up again. And so this collects all of the sugar canes that get harvested at the top and it deposits into these hoppers underneath here, which go into the chest storage. And you can see we have the same thing on the other side as well. And so the storage is exactly the same as the last two farms. It has an expandable design that goes downwards. And as you can see, it fills up from the bottom up to the top until it is eventually full. It actually has quite a lot more storage than the chests as all of the hoppers will fill up as well. And we've got quite a few hoppers all the way backed up in here. So it's got quite a bit more storage than just the chests as well. And so for the actual harvesting design, we have the simple design that is used by pretty much everyone. It's just pistons and observers above that. And behind them, we just have a redstone line. So once one of these observers gets triggered, it'll push all of the pistons out and harvest all of the sugarcane at once. And then of course the sugarcane will fall onto these grass blocks and it will get picked up by the minecart here. So once again, another simple farm design that's been made to look aesthetically pleasing. And if you want to build this one for yourself, click on the top right corner right now. Next up is a farm design that you might be familiar with from my channel, and that is the compact farm design. I have actually made a V2 of this build, which is a little bit more detailed and nicer looking in my opinion, and we'll get to that in a couple of minutes. So this design features several layers of farms and separation, like we have these three sections right here and then another three on the other side. And this design is also easily expandable. You can go up as high as you want, which was the intended design of this build. So coming through the front, we have a bunch of storage and we also have a crafting table on every floor as well for ease of use. Each farm is easy to access. You can just quickly harvest everything and then place it all back. I don't know why there's a fox here, but okay. There's also two double chests for each section. So you have, for example, seeds and then the harvested crop or in the case of carrots you can just put them in each chest and then of course we can head up to the next floor and it's obviously just the exact same design just repeated once again and then same for up here this time we got melons and pumpkins so in my opinion i'm not really a fan of this build anymore i made it quite a while ago and my building skills have definitely improved since then so if you like this idea but you want a nicer looking build let's head over to the v2 of the build now this one actually features less floors but is obviously expandable and this design features a lot more detail a lot more intricate designs and attention to detail and it's just overall better in my opinion we've got a lot more wood instead of more stone which gives more of a cozy appearance and we also have a lot more lanterns as well so let's head in through the front door this time we have a little bit less storage but is more aesthetically pleasing you could of course replace these with a double chest and chuck a composter and a barrel on this side if you wanted to i would probably do that as well and then it's pretty much exactly the same as the old one except the farms are actually raised one up from the floor as well and heading up to the second floor, we just obviously have the repeated design again. And then this would be the finishing floor. You could put chests or anything up here, or you could put them down here. But the idea is to pretty much expand these farm floors as far up as you need to go. And you could also even go down underground as well if you wanted. So those are my two completely manual farms. And if you want to build either one of those, click on the top right corner right now for the tutorial for each. 
Now we're looking at the semi-automatic farms, and these are semi-automatic in the way that you're able to press a lever or a button, and that triggers usually water, which harvests all of the crops and sends them into hoppers and then into the chest, but you have to manually plant them back yourself. So the idea is it's kind of like just an upgraded normal wheat field where you have to still plant everything yourself, then you leave it to grow, and once you come back and see that it's all ready to harvest, you just flick the lever, and then all of the wheat gets harvested and sent into the hoppers and into the chest, just like so. Now this design is a bit of a smaller variant of the one that's coming up next. And this one is mainly just one field. Uh, the idea is to kind of just repeat this side by side if you need more. And the way that this one works is it's just a simple redstone line going from this lever down here, and then it connects up over here on top of all of these dispensers. And as you can see behind all of these stairs are the faces of the dispensers, and they all have a water bucket inside, and they waterlog these stairs and then the water gets sent down to the edge of the hoppers. The only thing about this design that I would change which I kind of overlooked when I was making the tutorial is I would change this from a lever to a button instead. As you can see you have to flick it four times to turn it on and off but if you just get a button it will do the on and then it'll do the off just in two presses just like that. I'm not sure why I forgot about that but yeah. So if you want to create this build for yourself Head over to the top right right now to find my video on the tutorial for this build. So here we are at the final build, and this is the biggest and craziest one I feel that I've probably ever made. I have made this quite a while ago, so there's a lot of style choices I would change nowadays, but I'll leave that up to you. So this is pretty similar to the compact farm design in that it has multiple floors where you can plant multiple different types of crops on each floor. On this one, we just have wheat for now. But instead of having to harvest all of these yourself, you can just flick a lever down here to harvest this side, and then you flick another lever to harvest this side. So heading inside, this is the first floor. We just have some smokers for cooking any food you have and a little bit of storage and crafting as well. We'll check out downstairs in just a minute, but heading upstairs, we can check out one of the floors. Each of the floors are exactly the same, so I'll just head up to this floor. Pretty much these are the two sides with all of the crops here. You can open up this trap door to head inside if you wanna plant some. I'm not sure why there's two missing here. I haven't been to this build in probably since I built it like eight months ago. But the whole idea is when you flick this lever, it sends a redstone signal all the way up along all of these torches here. And then this torch toggles this redstone, which lowers this piston and it just sends the water out and it goes all the way to the edge here. And then it all collects in this water down here and heads down the main chute, I guess, right here. And from there, it goes down into this hopper, into this chest, and then it heads into the sorting system down below. So I'm just gonna quickly harvest this side and show you how it works. So we turn on the lever, and as you can see, it opens the piston, which releases all of the water and sends all of the items down. And you can hear this clicking as well, which is the auto sorter working. And down here is where our main storage and automatic sorting is. So heading in here, we can see the auto sorter right here. And I'm not really entirely sure how this works completely, but all of that I do know is to add more items on, you have to just extend this design out to the left. So on this one, you can see we have some wheat seeds and then some random items just to fill it up. And this means that all of the seeds will get sent into this hopper. But then when we have wheat, they'll all get sent into this hopper and get sent down this way into these chests on this left side. So to add something like melons, I guess, you would repeat this whole design right here that I'm in line with over to the left. And instead of wheat, you would put melons and then you'd put just any random item in here and then send these hoppers off to more chests. So as you can see on this side, we have wheat filling up on this side. And then on this side, we have seeds. And then you would probably add melons. I'd probably just add them all into the same chests on this side, or you could just extend the storage over that way and put the melons over there. So that's pretty much this entire design. It is very high tech and pretty crazy for a farm and I also tried my best at the time to make it look as good as possible with some pretty intricate designs that took a long time to design. I remember spending hours just redoing all of these walls over and over again. But with that said, if you want to create this build for yourself, once again, click on the top right corner and that'll take you to the tutorial video. And that pretty much does it for all of the efficient farm designs on my channel. If you missed any in the top right corner and you want to actually build them for yourself, you can also look in the description for the link to each one. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to let me know in the comments and also leave a like as it helps me know if you guys want more videos just like this one. Cheers for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next video.